Well, there's no question that we're heavily focused on football uh, now that fall has commenced. Uh, but uh, Scott Reese, play-by-play uh, -play radio man for the Stanford Cardinal men's basketball team, uh, you've already had a chance to start looking forward to the 2014-15 <laughs> season. Yeah, it's funny. March doesn't seem like that long ago, and yet I was on campus today and I got to see some of the workout. They haven't started official practices yet, but they're they're working out. The students obviously are on campus, school is in session, and it got me excited. I'm, I'm really excited about the upcoming season. Obviously, a lot of roster turnover, a number of uh, uh, players that have been mainstays in the program over the, over the last several years. Josh Hustis, uh, Dwight Powell, Aaron Bright now moving on to St. Mary's. Uh, and we have a lot of new faces. Tell us a little bit about not only the new incoming freshmen who you can, uh, can't always guarantee what kind of an impact a freshman, true freshman will have, but we also are bringing back a few other faces that uh, we, we had thought we were going to see last year. Yeah, you, you lose six guys from the roster, but you essentially bring back six guys with the four freshmen and you get Roscoe Allen back and you get Christian Sanders back and, and both of them will contribute. Uh, I, I will say this probably 20 times between now and the start of the actual season, but I think Roscoe Allen is the most important player player on the roster this year. Okay, really in what do. way? Well, you know what you're getting from the backcourt. Jason Randall, Anthony Brown, fantastic. You've got great depth, and we'll talk about Sanders and the Allen twins coming back. And by the way, Robert Cartwright, I think, is going to be a factor as a freshman this year. You don't know as much what you have in the front court beyond Stefan Nastic. Grant Verhoeven is hurt. They hope to have him back by November, December, but they're not 100% sure. And when you lose a couple of guys to the NBA in Houston and Powell, you've got some holes to fill. And I believe Roscoe Allen is the guy who can get Stanford back to the Sweet 16 if he has a terrific season. He can be a four, he can be a three, but he's got to be able to play heavy minutes and contribute that's, because that's where they've And that's quite a most. statement to, yeah. to, to put that mantle of responsibility on him. Yeah. Well, let's, let's talk a little bit about Stefan Nostic. This is a guy that came out of sort of nowhere and became a dominating force in the yeah. NCAA tournament. Can we see a continued progression from uh, Stefan? Uh, you know, is he going to hit 26 out of 31 shots uh, <laughs> you know, every incrementally uh, across the season? I don't know. I, I love this guy. I, he's First of all, couldn't be a better person. Absolutely. Uh, interesting guy. Too. Interesting guy. Takes an interest in technology. He's much more than an athlete. Nobody works harder. It's such a cliche, but this guy really does work as hard as anybody at his craft. And if he can just stay on the floor a little bit more, foul trouble has plagued him throughout his career, as will happen when you're seven feet tall. If he can stay on the floor, his production per minute is really good offensively. He's got to get a little bit better with the rebounds. I think he's going to have to contribute more in that realm. Without, right, because we're losing a lot. With Eustis and Powell gone, that's right. a lot of rebounding right. from this team. Right. right, but but I love what Steph brings to the table, and I think that you know he, he's a guy who teams are actually going to look at and say, okay, we got a, we got a game plan for this guy a little bit now without without Josh and Dwight. And you talk about all of those those six players being off the roster. That included Andy Brown, who was lost as much for his leadership and his heart and example than anything else. He didn't get a chance to be on the floor the way we all hoped and prayed he would. Uh, I look back and I see Christian Sanders coming back. The, to me, you mentioned Roscoe Allen's importance. Sanders, to me, at times, even as a freshman, looked like the best overall basketball player on the court, at least to my eye. He he is a he is a basketball player. I think that's the perfect way to describe him. Uh, he came out of high school as a shooter, and he didn't shoot well his his true freshman year. But I think that was just a, you know the shots didn't fall early. And I think he lost some confidence along the way. But he did so many other things that made you think, wow, this kid can really play. And I'm telling you, he can also shoot. I like Christian Sanders a lot. He's bigger. He looks taller to me. Uh, he certainly put on a little bit of weight. And, and he's going to be a factor. And it, what we can do in terms of the, the, the various lineups and, and matchups, go big, go small, go three guards, go four guards. You know, you've got Marcus Allen, who's going to be one of the best defensive players, I think, in the conference before all is said and done. is sort of your stopper. Uh, Christian Sanders might start, he might come off the bench, but he's going to play. Well, and of course, for Johnny Dawkins, figuring out what, what's really going to happen in the guard rotation will be interesting. We didn't actually see it uh, addressed last year as much as we might have thought. Aaron Bright was injured and was at, was largely out of the picture. We had very young guys in the Allen Twins coming up, so we never really figured out what was the optimal way to showcase Jason Randall, clearly one of the better players in the conference 
if put in the right position. Yeah, that's going to be, I think, a big question heading into this season, too. Do you do you rock the boat, so to speak, and do you move him off the point after you sort of groomed him the last couple of years to, to be more of a point guard when obviously his natural tendency is a two guard? Uh, or, or do you do you keep him where he is and, and, and work around that? And, and, and a lot of that may depend on Robert Cartwright, the true freshman, because if he's ready for prime time minutes, it really gives you another option because he's a true point. And that's what we saw from yeah. his from his film. Yep. We, we, there's limited uh, YouTube footage and others we've been able to watch a Cartwright, and he gives you that different look. It may not be, uh, uh, I don't want to use the term white chocolate, but he had a little bit of, uh, uh, of shimmy to his game and a little bit of that, that swagger that helps, helps as you're distributing the basketball. He has swagger. He is he's a floor burn kind of guy. He will get after it. He's he's got some some David Harbour in him, some Matt Lodick in him in terms of that sort of intensity, the personality. The coaches absolutely love him. I don't think there's any question that this is a kid who down the line is going to be a team captain type of a guy. And oh by the way, watching him shoot, he's got a nice stroke. I mean, he really has a, a complete game and I think he's going to make an impact sooner rather than later. The only thing that may hold him back is they are so deep at the guard position. A big opportunity obviously for a young guy like uh, Reed Travis to come in, but he's coming off injury. Do we know an, a status update on the... On yeah, the... he's fine. I mean, I think he'll be raring to go for uh, the start of official practices. He's probably a, a week or two away from being cleared. So, uh, yeah, they, they cleaned up his knee. It was not a major procedure. Uh, Reed will be fine, and, and my guess is he's probably at least 50-50 to be a starter from day one. Right, and looks like a pretty wide body for a, a true freshman coming in there, uh, especially when we have rebounds to to put on the on the yeah. stat sheet. Yeah, go get him, kid, because uh, you got a lot of rebounds to account for with uh, with Hustis and Powell no longer on the roster, and uh, he's up to the task. I mean, you've seen him. He's, he's, a, he's a big guy. He's played against top flight competition. McDonald's All-American. He certainly held his own uh, in that game, and, and like I said, he, he I think he is capable of starting from day one and again, a lot of that will depend on how they want to space out the rest of the roster in terms of big, small. You can play Anthony Brown at the three. You can play him at the two. You know, Cartwright is a factor. Roscoe Allen's a big factor. A lot of toys to play with for Johnny Dawkins. This roster really is stacked. And we've talked roster, and and, and obviously the schedule came out recently. Uh, let's talk a little bit about Johnny Johnny Dawkins and company. This is going into a, uh, you know, there was a lot of talk about uh, Johnny's job being on the line last year, needing to deliver, and they did in the tournament. And not only that, made it to the Sweet 16. So they sort of overperformed and then uh, landed a remarkable recruiting class. So new life is is has been breathed into the uh, the Dawkins uh, uh, era. And uh, we're all, obviously, everybody's rooting for Johnny and his staff. Uh, but now he gets a chance to, uh, to to reload. The rest of the conference loses people as well. So you've got, you've got a, a fresh slate, a, a good good early conf- uh, non-conference schedule to, yeah. to build uh, and work out the rotations and see who see who's ready to play non-conference schedule is great i mean you you got san diego state and maybe duke in new york which would be off the charts cool uh you go play depaul which is a nice bcs conference game on the road sort of get your feet wet uh you go to provo to play byu you go to austin to play texas i mean those are tough games so you're going to be battle tested by the time you get to the conference and i I think the pac-12 is going to take a step back it was really really good last year and i still think it's going to be a good conference this year but you mentioned some of the attrition some of the losses aaron gordon's and yeah yeah and and, and it's cyclical and and i think that the conference top to bottom probably won't be as good oregon lost what half his team half its team because of disciplinary issues and so a a few I think of the contenders are going to take a step back I don't think Stanford will I think the Cardinals certainly will be picked in the top third of the conference and there's no reason with that roster why they can't deliver so I guess uh, in my mind one of the keys to season success is to reestablish a dominant home venue Uh, it's been a problem for a number of years now Uh, we've got loyal Stanford basketball fans who continue to support the team six man club maybe could be a little better populated and the atmosphere needs to return to those days from 1999 through 2001 2000 2004. Uh, we really haven't seen the same Maples madness in recent years, and and that's probably a variety of factors: television, odd timing, weeknight games. Uh, but that has a dramatic impact on the team's overall record and chances of getting in the tournament. Well, and you got to have a winning product, and now there's a winning product. I mean, there is certainly something to sell. Uh, the administration is conscious of it. The coaching staff is conscious of it. The players are conscious of it. So I don't know what they are going to do specifically to address that between now 
now and the time they actually tip this thing off in November, but I promise you they will take measures to address it. And believe me, I like nothing better than sitting at the you know the the play by play table there and, and looking across and seeing a pack six man club. It makes for a great basketball atmosphere. Well, it's been a long uh, long time since we've seen Dickie V being uh, being, <laughs> being uh, uh, pushed up the uh, student section. Maybe we'll get back to those days. And uh, Scott, maybe it'll be you up there in the uh, in the six man. Uh, you know you volunteering? I am volunteering. Sign me up. Absolutely. Yeah, as long as we can beat UCLA by fifty. You got it. Uh, you got it. Yeah, Arizona. I want to Arizona. Beat Arizona. By excellent. 50. Excellent. <laughs> well, big Stanford basketball uh, season coming up. We can look forward to that. It's only only uh, really. Uh, let's call it. Uh, six weeks from the first yeah, exhibition we're, game, we're, we're so getting we're getting there. there. Yep. So it's mm-hmm. uh, it's time to start adding basketball to your uh, your sports um, uh, following interests, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing big things from Johnny Dawkins and company.